Now the question we can ask would be about the sources, the reason, how it is possible, how it happened in history. The people started to believe that CO2, which is so important for our health, is considered often as toxic waste poisonous gas. Probably the superstition was born at the time of great French chemist Antonio Lavoisier, who in 1780s did experiments and found similarities between process of breathing and respiration. He did famous experiments with mice and candle. He put a mice under a glass cover and also he put a candle, burning candle under glass cover. So what happened later? The candle, due to diminishing content of oxygen, the candle was burning and it gradually expired because there was no oxygen. And later they found there was more CO2 under the glass cover. Oxygen was gone, but CO2 concentration got high. Now we did the same experiments with mice. Mice was running. But there was no oxygen excess there. So oxygen content was also gradually decreasing. And after a certain amount of time, mice would die because of no oxygen. CO2 content would be higher under glass cover. And since then, it was decided by popular people, by popular mind, that CO2 is toxic waste poisonous gas because it brings death. Whereas oxygen brings life, the same as a candle. So candle was symbol of life, burning candle, oxygen, whereas CO2 became a symbol of death. It's of course true that if we have this air filled only with CO2, we can die in minutes because there is no oxygen. We need oxygen, but we need also CO2. And we can also think about what medical people say, because medical people say that we need normal amount of CO2. Why? The same about water. If you take four or five liters of water at once, you can fill your lungs and the person can die. So we don't need so large amount of water. We need reasonable amounts over a certain period of time. The same situation is with CO2. We need normal, healthy level of CO2, which corresponds to light, easy, healthy breathing pattern. For example, father of cardiorespiratory science, Yale University professor, medical professor, who wrote first books on physiology, Yandel Henderson, he wrote the following quote about CO2. Carbon dioxide is, in fact, a more fundamental component of living matter than is oxygen. Life probably existed on Earth for millions of years prior to the Carboniferous era, in an atmosphere containing a much larger amount of carbon dioxide than at present. There may even have been a time when there was no free oxygen available in the air. Yandel Henderson, Carbon Dioxide in Cyclopedia of Medicine, 1940. Let us think about concentration of oxygen and carbon dioxide inside our cells. For example, in the brain, in heart, other tissues. How much CO2 and how much is oxygen there? So if I write these numbers on the board, I can make here a small cell. So this cell would be right here. I put cell. This is the cell of our brain or the heart. So how much is ox oxygen and CO2 there? We have about 7% of CO2 and only 2% of oxygen in the cell of the healthy human being. So you can see here concentration of CO2 is very, very high and oxygen is low. And in fact, it was close to the percentage concentration that we had in evolution long, long time ago. We can also think about conditions when human embryo grows in the womb of the mother because we know that the nature repeats the evolution inside the womb then the human being can grow just from one cell. The cell starts to grow and there is a plate of cells and they start to fold and the organ starts to bud. The whole science embryology study this process. And what is going on there with CO2 and oxygen? We know that CO2 concentration in embryo is about 50% higher than in adult. And oxygen content about 3-4 times less in embryo. So this also recreates the condition which existed long time ago in the history of the development of human species. In the past, when we did not have any oxygen long, long time ago because there were no green cells, we had a lot of CO2 in there. And geological studies confirm that we have about 10, 12, 15, maybe even more percent of CO2. Because CO2 was part of volcanic gases. Our earth was hot. Oxygen is very reactive substance, so there was no free oxygen in air. At a certain point of time in history of the earth, we got appearance of first living cells. But they still did not produce oxygen. And later during evolution, there were first green cells. Green light. We started to take CO2 from air and using process of photosynthesis to produce oxygen. So with advancement of green life, 
CO2 content became less and less and oxygen content started to increase due to again processes of photosynthesis in green life. So, but when our lungs appeared, that would be another question to ask. What was concentration of CO2 and oxygen? According to leading respirologist Professor Maina, he believes that when our lungs appeared, oxygen content in air was less than 1% and CO2 was more than 7%. So, I put here lungs, prototype of human lungs. When we were evolving, so what we had during these times, we had more than 7% of CO2 and about 1% or even less of oxygen. So oxygen content, it's very similar to what we have right now in cells, was even less. And CO2 was more than 7%. There was a time when our lungs evolving. Now, what we have right now in modern air would be totally different situation. We have virtually no CO2. 0.03%. Almost nothing. And we have about 20% of oxygen. Very high concentration. It's air which we breathe right now. So what we can see here, there is a big change in air in our component environment in which we live in. And we can also now think about the functioning, the life of primitive creatures living in this air when our lungs were forming and they were creating the connections with the brain. Because the brain controls our lungs, how we breathe, even when we are unconscious or during the rest at night all the time. So what was going on in the past with primitive creatures? O2 concentration was very small. And that means that heavier breathing in the past would provide primitive creatures with more oxygen. Because right now, even with light breathing, people who have normal breathing, they extract only quarter of oxygen. This air is hyperoxic, it's too much oxygen for us. Three quarters we exhale back. Sick people exhale back 90% or even more of oxygen. So it's very inefficient breathing that we have right now, heavier breathing. But in the past, when oxygen content was very, very small in air, heavy breathing would provide primitive creatures with more oxygen. At the same time, when the heavy, these primitive creatures were breathing, they had about 7% in outer air. So they were taking the nutrient already from air, and they could breathe very, very heavy. Inside their tissues, they would still get more than 7%. Because they, due to their own metabolic rate, they generate own CO2 in addition to this 7% which they inhale with air. That means primitive creatures would never develop these abnormalities that we discussed with you before. While the constriction would not take place, bore effect would be never suppressed. They would not get excited nervous cells. So all these effects are not possible when inspired air has very high CO2 concentration. And what happens in the past with primitive creatures? You can imagine that any activity, fight situations, flight, getting food, games, all type of recovery from injuries when certain organs need more oxygen would be accompanied by heavy breathing. Because when oxygen requirements are higher, heavy breathing would provide more oxygen. So it became ingrained as a fundamental reflex of the human body. Fundamental instinct to breathe heavy as any sign of stress. Psychological, physiological stress, chemical, bacteriological, viral, any type of stress would create heavy breathing. Only total peace even no digestion, just total peace and relaxation and rest. Only in these conditions, breathing would be light. Because there is no oxygen demand. So a primitive creature can relax and breathe lightly and easy. And since then, it became ingrained in the nervous system. Probably as more fundamental as instinct for water, for food, for sex that exists in human beings. The instinct to breathe heavy at signs of stress. And so now we can also understand why people, for example, who die from heart attack, asthma attack, other conditions, more than 90% of people are dying in conditions of severe hyperventilation, why they are gasping for air. Because in somehow in their minds there is still a primitive idea, a primitive reflex that by breathing more they can get more oxygen. But in fact it is not so. And it helps us to understand that right now evolution provided us with lungs and by breathing less, by choosing our lifestyle factors correctly, we can easily survive even in air which has very high oxygen content and very little CO2.